Uh, we're going to be talking today about images and copyright um, specifically for e-learning, but it will apply both for online and in-person classes. And what are our objectives today? For you to be able to understand some of the basics of image copyright compliance, where to be able to find some open source media that you can use. If you already have images, how to do reverse image searching so that you have the image and you're trying to verify where that image came from. How to use image properties. So once you've identified an image that you'd like to use, you've figured out it's okay to use, you can then document that image to verify in the future and not have to go back and recreate the wheel and research for it. And then just basic image resources for you. So basically copyright applies very similarly to images as it does to written works. Just like with written works, as soon as the um, creation has been done, whether it's a photograph or sculpture or painting or clip art or whatever it is that somebody has created, immediately that copyright applies. You do not have to send it in to the copyright office. You automatically have copyright. So the examples might be photographs, any of the graphics you would consider like vectors, icons, clip art, uh, paintings, sculptures, even videos or podcasts that you create, video games, computer software, um, and any form of expression or creative work. Right. So it covers quite a bit. Mm -hmm. So basically, what is copyright? It is the author or creator, or in some cases, the owner where the copyright has been given to somebody or purchased by somebody or inherited by somebody of an original work. And that gives them exclusive rights. So they're able to reproduce or copy it and or distribute the original work to the public. So an example would be like making multiple copies of a photograph and then selling that creating new works based upon the original work. Some people might refer to this as a derivative. Yeah. And so it might be changing colors, cropping. Um, it could be even um, making multiple copies of it and having each one a different color or superimposing them, um, et cetera, or um, performing or displaying the work publicly. Um, so if you wanted to have an exhibition of your work, that is one of those things that you can have. You'll notice also at the bottom down here, I've listed some URLs. Those are also available um, elsewhere. I'll talk about it more, but each of these are set up so that if you wanted more information about the specific topic, you could go back there and get that. And they'll be handed out <clears throat> with the follow-up. That absolutely, out. absolutely. Um, virtually everything that you see in here is going to be part of the lim images libguide um, or online guide. So first of all, what is fair use? When are you allowed to use something under fair use? Well, it permits unlicensed use of copyrighted works in certain circumstances. Well, most of us as educators say, oh good, fair use, education. Mm -hmm. And that's true. It, is established based upon the purpose and the character of the work, whether it's commercial versus the educational. And as educators, we do have certain privileges um, through this. It's the nature of a copyright work and it's new work, it's new use. Um, it can be the amount and substantiality of a portion used in relation to the entire copyrighted work. If you're using 100% of it, 25% of it, et cetera. Um, and also the effect of the use on the potential market for or the value of the copyrighted work. Mm -hmm. So if what you are doing is potentially going to affect that market or the value of that original work, you may have some problems in using it. So some additional considerations would be what we call work for hire. And I know this is one of those um, kind of sticky wickets that we get into. Um, so imagine you're a photographer and you take a photograph. You are the creator of that and you own the rights as the creator. Um, and if somebody hires you to take photographs, you need to make sure what your contract says because if the creator is paid to create something, their rights may be transferred to whoever is paying for their creation. You also get into the employee versus independent contractor um, who has control over the work, control over the employee, um, by the employer, if all of these types of fun things. Licensing agreements, yeah. 
that's um, hyperlink there because it's really important. Um, look at the term there, 95 years from date of publication or 120 years from date of creation, whichever expires first. So obviously not in my lifetime. Right. And also keep in mind, if you have people who are mod modeling or you have animals that people own, uh, things like that, those models may also have individual rights. Part of that depends upon the licenses that they signed. So the question is, which images can I use? The best are going to be images that you created, photographs you have taken, artwork that you have created on your own. Not everybody can do that. I'm not going to be creating vectors or things like that. Your next best. I can do, but beyond that. <laughs> and you're a wonderful photographer too, so we should all go to Judy for our pictures. <laughs> next best is going to be public domain. And after that, Creative Commons. And we're going to talk about Creative Commons and what it is. And we're going to start with um, anytime you can use Creative Commons, you want to start with the least restrictive license. We're going to talk about the licenses and what we mean by that. So public domain I mentioned. And it's works that are not protected by copyright or other intellectual property laws. So it may be a case where copyright is expired or maybe the copyright owner failed to renew their copyright or maybe the copyright owner says I would like to dedicate this and put this in the public domain very large-hearted or the copyright law may not protect a particular type of work We also sometimes, and we get crazy with this, because we'll look at a, uh, a website and it will say copyright free, or maybe it will say royalty free, and we think, what in the world are they talking about? Well, when you see that, the work may be actually in the public domain, and it may be copyright free, somebody doesn't own the copyright, and it may be royalty free, you may be able to use it without paying somebody. If it's royalty free, it simply means you don't have to pay to use. So you may have something that is copyrighted that they still allow you to use based upon certain restrictions. Mm -hmm. okay. So you have to know what the difference is between copyright free, where there's no copyright, it's truly in the public domain, or royalty free, where you're talking about having to pay for use. You always want to make sure you're looking for copyright free and royalty free, so somebody is not charging you for the privilege of using it. Creative, this is the fun part. Creative Commons has four different licensing and they have these cute little icons. Um, so attribution by, that means you have to indicate a person, so we have the little person symbol, that you have to indicate a person created it. You're going to give attribution to that person. Share alike is the SA, sometimes you'll see these with the uh, actual uh, abbreviations and more often you're going to see them with the icons, I think. Non-commercial, non-commercial use, notice there's a line through that dollar sign and no derivatives. We talked about if you wanted to change what somebody had done ever so slightly, you might be able to do that. So with this mix of four different icons, we have these six different licensing types. These are from the least restrictive to the most restrictive. So the least restrictive is going to be attribution, meaning I can, I can use that image, but I have to say who created it, who either created the image, they, they made a uh, drawing, a vector, whatever, who took the photograph, attribution, share alike, You'll notice now we have two icons in here. I'm still giving attribution mm -hmm. and I'm sharing it just as it is. Non-commercial, I'm still giving attribution and I can't use it for commercial gain in a commercial setting. In this one, giving my attribution and no derivatives. 
And this one, we're getting three icons now. So non-commercial, well, doing our attribution, non-commercial, and the share alike. And then this is the non-commercial with the attribution and the no derivatives. So what would we be finding primarily for use in coursework? It's really going to depend. Um, I'm going to talk with you also about Creative Commons, which is a site that you can actually go to, and you'll see these different licenses represented. Obviously, the one that's going to be the easiest to use is going to be this first one, where all you have to do is give attribution or credit to the person who created it. And that's what the by means? Yes. So we also, some people say, oh, well, what if I go to the US government? Is that the same difference? Well, not always. Mm -hmm. um, generally, US government works are in the public domain, but there may be some restrictions. The creator may have retained some rights. Models may have retained mm -hmm. some rights. You always have to check for copyright restrictions. There's a wonderful page here that our US government put together that explains a lot of this. So I'm going to go into basically how you can select images. So you want to be able to use something, um, and where do you go? How do you do this? Well, you can discover images by doing reverse image searching. So you already have an image that you used in your course. You're going through your work, and you say, gee, I wonder if this is okay for me to use. You can do a reverse image search, taking the image you have, and using one of these search engines that I'll point out in a few minutes. And then you can check to see if you can verify who actually owns the copyright of that image. Sounds like it might be a bit of a challenge though. Um, there's some really good tools. Oh, go so yes, but it still might be more, it might be a challenge, but there's some really good tools. Um, you can also search for free to use images and we've got a lot of resources yeah. on that. Um, documenting your images. Once you find an image that you'd like to use, you really want to be able to document it so you don't have to question it in your mind, gee, was that one of the ones that I said was okay? Where did it yeah. come from? If I need to give attribution, do I have the creator's name listed? And um, one reference that we have for you is the images libguide, which is right here. And um, you'll be able to take a look. We've got lots of different sections in it. and um, Time permitting, we'll go in and take a quick look at it too. Excellent. Thank you. Reverse image searching. Well, there is a page specifically for the re reverse image searching within that guide. But basically, you're going to compare an image that you have and you're going to compare it within a search engine. It may or it may not show who the rightful owner of the copyright image, mm -hmm. copyright is. What you especially want to look for is the Creative Commons license. Remember, there are those six different licenses. Yeah or a public domain notice. And usually I'll search with Google, Bing, or TinEye. And I'm going to try something here and see if I can actually do it correctly. So I'm going to try this, and I'm going to take a picture of the Eiffel Tower, and I'm going to copy it. And then I'm going to see if I can go here to the correct place. I'm sharing my screen. I'm going to stop sharing. I have to talk myself through this and share my web browser. Um, so I mentioned Google Images. So if you go to Google, you can click on Google Images. You may find it up here in this list. And so wherever you find or just go to regular old Google. And you may have to find it up here under Images. Once I'm there, I'm going to click on the little camera. And I can paste a URL, an image URL, or I can upload an image. And I'm actually, oh, see, I could have saved one step. I'm going to see if I can um, do this directly from my Here we go. OK, so we're going to take a look and see it says, this is the image that you actually showed us. And then it's saying official tower. Oh, look at here, I've got some pictures. Are they like this one? Well, some are similar, 
but am I finding one that is exactly like this one? See, I've got a shadow here. I've got the, well, this one actually may be very similar. It may be the exact same one. It may have been cropped on one side. This one looks like it's the exact same one, and it looks like it came from a booking site, from Paris visitors. What I'd really like to be able to do is find an image that's going to tell me where it's from. Ah, let's see. And this is where it gets interesting. You may find that you um, no longer like the Eiffel Tower because you've seen so many pictures of it. <laughs> but let's say that this was the one. Um, what I'd be doing is going here, visiting the site, and verifying or trying to verify where this came from. Oops, can't use this one. This one came from Getty. Getty oh. wants to charge me. Okay. Okay. So just looking at that allows me to verify um where things come from and if i can use it if i automatically know i may have to do another little search okay so you knew that because you're used to doing this is there some place that 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 would automatically trigger that information for us or? um well when you see getty that's telling you that it has they're giving the um attribution right there okay if they said that it was from a um they're attributing a site that specializes in images okay. like i stock photos or something like that yeah versus a, a person's name um so let's see if we can and another one sorry about this here we go is tin eye uh bing also will do this and so we could do the same kind of thing where we can upload or enter an image URL. So let's see if we can do the upload. We'll do the other Eiffel Tower and see if it works better. And it's not working very well. Okay, I must have done something wrong in the midst of all of this. Um, there we go. Um, so now I can see, and it went ahead and it did a whole lot of things found it in collections, found it in stock photos. And so I can take a look and it's even giving me dimensions and sizes. Um, it gives me a much better idea of what I'm looking at and whether or not this is something that I can use. So I might go to some of these sites. It says it found it matches in a lot of these different ones. and. What I'm looking for is something like this, where I can find a photo and have it say, oh yes, there's a Creative Commons on it. Pixabay, I know Pixabay has free images. And so I know then that I could use this as it was found originally on Pixabay. Um, part of that is getting used to it. And in that list of free images, uh, free image sources, you'll be able to find that. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing for this moment go back here and also you may be able to find images just going to this free images uh, page you'll find lists of sites to search for free images also besides things that i've come up with i have lists of other guides that have uh, information some best practices citing correctly we know we want our students to cite things um, and so we have information about how to cite images, what to be looking for, and some citation examples also for public domain as well as Creative Commons. Uh, we all learn very well by looking at examples, so those are available. Um, image metadata. What I'm talking about there, it's a fancy term for saying when you click on an image and you're on a computer and you click down at the bottom, you do a right click and click on properties, or information, you're going to be able to get to the back that will say metadata. Mm -hmm. Quite often it will pull in what camera you used, uh, information all like that, all of that type of thing. But you can also preserve some attribution information by putting in information about the photographer, a title, a URL, date taken, Creative Commons license, anything like that. You can also curate your own images that way. So you can make sure that you are able to remember when you took something and that it was you and not your friend who took it and that you actually have legal rights to be able to be using that. Um, one of the nice things is when you curate something, you're creating your own files. So you can label them however you want. You can do them by topic. You can do them by rights. 
you can do them just about any way that you want. And basically, you're kind of a librarian or an archivist <laughs> in doing that. So um, it's great. You'll be able to have image properties right there at your fingertips. So I'm going to see how am I doing on time? You still have uh, 20 minutes. Oh, good. Then I definitely am going to go in here and show you. And we're going to get back down here. And this is one of my favorite photos. This is one that I took of my son when he was commissioned as an officer in the U.S. Army. And this is the non-com who I dearly love, who was part of the ceremony and just happened to catch the two of them going down the ramp. And so what I wanted to be able to do then was go down here to my file info and they have picture name. Well, that's not the name of the picture that I want. Oops, it's not letting me pipe. Let's try this again. Hold on a minute. I'm scared it's going to delete the photo, but we'll see. Is it deleting? The, yes, it deleted the photo. It should let me type right here. It's um, it's acting funky, so I'm just going to deal with that. Um, but what I could do then is take my file name. You can see I was out in June. Not a fun time to go looking at giant grasshoppers. But that's when they're at their best. Yeah, or their worst, depending upon who you're with. Yeah. If you want to see somebody go mile high in the sky once they see one of those at their feet. Um, but you can take information like this. You can change some of the information um, if you want to. Here you've got a folder path. You could take that. You could indicate a URL if you wanted. You could, instead of device, you can create your own system. And if you're doing this and it happens to say properties, which mine often do, yeah. I have a lot more places to put information. Mm -hmm. So it's a great way to be able to have that information right there whenever you want. And I apologize that that didn't work the way I wanted it to. Well, we got the idea. But you got the idea. So some people will say, but wait, we have some databases with images. And as a librarian, I will verify, yes, we do. We have some amazing databases. Um, and I think about people who are in the arts. So we have Art Store, we have Cameo. And so generally, fair use is going to apply to for educational use. However, for each individual item, you have to check the license and verify mm -hmm. what is and what is not allowed. And your image citation information is quite often going to be available. You'll just be able to do a click, you'll run your mouse over something and it will say cite or citation. And quite often you can find that, but you don't know what image or what citation style it's in. So you may have to adjust things because it may be showing it in APA, you wanted it in MLA, things like that. So this right here, contact your liaison librarian if you have any questions, contact the reference desk, contact Which me, be you. Um, because we're there to be able to help right. you make yeah. sense of it. But these are great resources that we have. So I'm going to tell you a little bit about resources, and I'm going to um, also take some time to take us into the guide. Okay, um, were there any questions before I do that? Yeah, do we have any more? No? OK, great. Um, and, and this thing talks about, um, being able to see resources for copyright page. I had a whole lot of slides here and instead I put them in the guide. And so I'll show you where that's located, but you'll be able to find resources for copyright. And also if you want to get self-educate or work with students to educate them, there's, there's some really, really good, good copyright, copyright education, education resources, resources that are available. available. Um, there, there are lib guides. guides. So, so in other words, lib guides, guides are online reference, reference guides. guides. Mm -hmm. And, and FAU, FAU Libraries has, has prepared one in Boca. Uh, uh, Finding images, images is one that was prepared by our College of Medicine. Mm -hmm. um, and so they had different needs, obviously, looking at anatomical drawings and things like that. Um, and so you're going to find in information about copyright um, in all of those places. And then there are other universities that have created guides. And so rather than copying every single thing that they have, some of them feature different aspects of it. And so I've inclu included their links and some hints as far as what you're going to find there. And there's also an image handout. So the image handout, let's see if I can 
bring that up here. Um, looks like this, and I'll show you where you can get it. It's downloadable from our uh, images libguide, but basically it gives you the best practices here, linking to the original source best practices, the reverse image searching that I went over very basically, and it talks again about how to do that. It talks about where you can find the reverse image search engines, Tin I, that was the last one that I used, that I demoed, Google, and then Bing. And then also information about Creative Commons. This is where you'll be able to search. We'll go into that in a moment. And let me see if I can get to the page two of this. There we go. So this goes over again, the licensing conditions. So you'll remember all of those little icons and the abbreviations the licensing types. I also included what the public domain mark looks like, and they've come up with a new one. Sometimes you're going to see this, it's called free cultural works. And so they've taken these and they've said, this is something for everybody. There shouldn't be a copyright on this. And so you will see those from time to time as free cultural works. And then I've included also on this, uh, if you happen to download it, do it as it's, will be downloadable as a PDF, and um, you've got working hyperlinks, so how to search for images, repositories to look for images, academic image collections. Sometimes you want to make sure that you're getting past the K-12 to uh, kind of clip art or things like that, and so these are more focused towards academic. Um, the documenting your image information, the metadata, those were the uh, two soldiers as well as the giant grasshopper um, infographics um, and there is a separate guide now on infographics this will take you there and um, we also have something called credo information literacy that i'll talk about in a few minutes too but that is a um, great resource for faculty to be aware of <laughs> so here's our image libguide and i'm going to again try to do a share here for you and so this is the guide. My contact information is here on the right. Um, disclaimer here, um, this is not legal advice. Um, so <laughs> I, I am somewhat of an expert, but by no means an expert. Um, and here is where you're going to find that images handout that I just showed you very quickly. So that's available to you. We have information about books, databases, journals, collections. Um, collections is kind of neat because you'll see things from art museum, academic collections that are available. So we have different, um, like this one, this is uh, from Duke University. I love it. It's on advertising. Think about all those old ads that you oh, used to see in magazines and things like that. So there are all kinds of very interesting things that are available, art publications, other image collections that are available. Library of Congress, we know that we've got a lot of things from there. And again, you're going to have to verify if it's okay for you to use it. Videos, copyright and images. So this is where you're going to find that list of guides. This is the URL again to the guide that you're in, the images lib guide. It talks a little bit about copyright, giving you information for the Copyright Clearance Center, digital image rights computator, the US Copyright Office. So a lot of places that you can go to to get additional information and make sure that you're actually getting it directly from the horse's mouth, so to speak. Also the resources for copyright. We've got a lot of things here. Each one is noted, so Copyright Clearance Center or from Electronic Frontier Foundation. This is their teaching copyright with their FAQs, buttons and logos that you might want to use with Creative Commons, licensing type, types. I did not create all those different little icons, thankfully. Uh -huh. uh, this is nice. Creative Commons gives you examples. And some of these are examples that you're going to recognize the names of different places. Um, fair use, photo licensing. So if you do photography and you want to be able to find out how people license things, I know we've got some very creative people here. Um, this is a new thing, uh, Picture Licensing University System. It's a coalition that's international, nonprofit, and they are wanting to simplify and facilitate communication and management of image rights. 
uh, American memory. And so this is part of Library of Congress, privacy and publicity rights, rights statements, understanding free cultural works. That's one of those ones that I mentioned that was the green icon. Um, works made for hire, so it will cover that in detail. And then information here, if you want to learn yourself a little bit more about copyright or you would like some resources to be able to share with your students, you have that also. Creative Commons, wonderful place. So you can see all of the attributions here. You can go to Creative Commons. I'm gonna see if it's going to let me do it while I'm linking out of here. We will see if it works. It may be kind of slow. While well, it's thinking about bringing that up, uh, we have information on citing images here. And this is where I mentioned to you examples and information on how to uh, attribute public domain images as well as Creative Commons images. And so you'll have examples here too. The document image, information metadata, there's a short video here that's going to show you, this is the one that had properties and so it had a lot more information, but this shows you um, in just a minute or so um, how you can set that up, how you can do it on your own. Creating your own images, uh, Adobe Spark, somebody from Center for E-Learning showed me about that, that was wonderful. We've got some of these other ones and some of these also lend themselves towards infographics. Reverse image searching, so this is going to take you to those sites again, give you the basics, giving you step-by-step. -step. Search for free to use images. I know this is what everybody really wants. So this is taking you a few places. This is selling, telling you also, if you're going to be looking for images on one of these major search engines, Bing, Google, things to be aware of. And here are a lot of recommended image repositories for you. We also have separate information here so you can see what Creative Commons is going to look like when you go to do a search. You can indicate here in the search box what you're looking for. And you can indicate, I want it for commercial purposes or I want to be able to modify it. And you can choose all of these or you can choose just some of these, but it will do search for you. Laurie, Laurie yes. Yes. those that you have listed there, is it anything from that site is uh, available to use or they have some Creative Commons available? They are looking, looking through, through Creative Commons to see what is licensed through Creative Commons okay. and then you would have to look at the individual license. Okay. Find out if you can just, just do, do the attribution or it's, it's available. available for commercial use, things like that. Six, seven minutes here. Okay. okay. And, and Google, Google images, images, again, if you wanted to find specific images, you can go into an advanced image search. That's one of the options when you're there at the image window. And you can indicate what it is that you'd like. They even give you some examples of how to put information into the search, search box. Then you can also narrow things. And you can also narrow it a little bit more. So you'll see here is what the basic box looks like. And then you can see with some of these looking at usage rights. Um, you could even indicate black and white color, et cetera. So this should help you when you go searching. Um, and again, this is just looking for images that you, you do not have. It's not the reverse image search. This is just a search for any image. There is a guide here for infographics if you want. And we also have information about how to get assistance. So you can go give us a call contact me, et cetera, and all of these different ways to reach us. Unbelievable amount of information just in this one lib guide there. That's almost anything that we wanted to know, but we're afraid to ask, right? <laughs> it's it's lots, lots of, lots of, lots of fun, fun stuff, stuff in there. there. So, so I'm going to see if I'm getting here. Stop sharing. Okay, so I'm going to take you for just a moment. The images guide I showed you, scholarly communication program, we have a uh, Scholarly Communications Librarian, Jane Strudwick. Uh, you'll be seeing more things from her. Um, we also have a library DIY resource guide. I recommend people look at it. It's got, it's kind of set up like a Jeopardy board and it's, but it's so easy for faculty and students to be able to use and it's a great resource um, to send people to. I mentioned very briefly, Credo Information Literacy. 
what it is, 60 high quality videos, tutorials, and quizzes. So it's a combination of all of those things. You also have a pre-test and post-test that you could use for the entire 60, or there are different modules and some of the modules will also have short quizzes. So the pre-test and post-test are 20 questions and the individual modules typically are five questions. But you can use this to supplement existing lessons that you have, or if you need to address some gaps in the classroom or you wanna make sure every student has really heard about this. Mm -hmm. These are short. Um, I think the longest one is six minutes and most are about three minutes. If you're doing the tutorial, you just go along at your own pace and you're, there's also some writing, some interactivity, et cetera. Um, you can also embed the resources into Canvas and um, the authentication for student access is built into the modules and it is ADA compliant. And so the modules- uh, Just a couple of like module titles, modules covering- Modules will be covering things like, like citations, citations and we have all the different citation styles. It talks about narrowing your topic. You could, right. yeah, you could find information about plagiarism. You could find information about just a whole raft of things. They're set up in six different modules, large modules and about 10 in each. Um, also the quiz grades can go directly into uh, the grade book of the instructor. Okay. And instructors can self-enroll in this to um, take a look at it. Mm -hmm. um, Tom O'Brien and myself are the two that are working especially with people on this. And you can also go here, we have two guides. One is specifically Credo. You can actually get in and see all of the information oh, okay. uh, in there um, because it is uh, set up for your FAU login. There's also a two minute vid uh, video here for faculty. It gives them an idea about what we have in there. Do we have any questions from any of our, our uh, participants? There's a lot of information you've shared with us today, Lori. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. <laughs> no, don't be. It's it can be overwhelming. It can, it be, overwhelming. can be, but 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 we get a lot of um, a lot of mm, comments, for want of a better word, <laughs> on how to, you know what's the best way to do this. So we truly appreciate what you are sharing with us. Any uh, yeah. any. No, not so far. Okay, all right. So, uh, whew, thank you. For those who are attending, know that we will be sending in our follow-up note links to uh, all of this. We also have a couple of copies in here of the um, Match Made for Faculty Finding Images uh, document that she shared with us but that those links will all be included when we uh, when we send our, our follow-up note out to you. So we thank you so very much, Lori, for joining us and for sharing all this amazing information. Thank, thank you. Thank you for having me here.